Well, I'm going to go over several things on this one video involving emergency power. You know, a lot of people don't want to bother getting a generator. It's a pain in the ass. I know. I got two of them. One's diesel, and I demonstrated that before. It's getting fixed because I screwed it up, but even though it's brand new practically. And I have another one that's a uh, gasoline with a Japanese Vanguard engine on it. And that one, you know, if you need gas, you can use that. It's like, I think it's 5,000 watts or something. Now this is a very cheap way to actually have some emergency power and I want to go over a few things. And since I've been around with this stuff and I researched it over some years, I'm going to go with the experience as to what works, what holds together and all this kind of garbage. Number one, this battery. Notice the date on it. It's actually old. It's from uh, July 08. It's just a um, max deep cycle Walmart battery. Actually this battery is absolutely fine. The reason is, is because I use very good chargers on it. I keep it up to charge all the way. And you know, you can open this up. You can put distilled water in it if you need it. Now, I've used this charger for a number of years. I like this one. Now, what happens is, it's pretty close to full. It's probably 95% charged. I'm going over several things on this, so I don't know. Hopefully, you just bear with me. This I got this when this first came out. It's called Battery Minder and basically it has a circuitry in it when the battery gets up to fully charged like the red light is on now showing it's charging and the green shows it's connected it goes into sulfating mode desulfating mode and this thing starts flashing so what it does is it keeps in other words a battery can last decades decades it could be 30 years old as long as it doesn't you know as long as it's been maintained correctly the right type of charging equipment actually this battery reminder was about 50 bucks with this special pulse mode circuitry when it first came out I like it because some of the more high-tech battery chargers they run fans in them and you really can't leave them on all the time this I could just leave on um, forever and then it just actually will keep the battery from sulfating the plates it's got some desulfating technology in there so even though this battery is four years old, it's like perfect condition, okay? Now, I have two inverters here. This is a 350 watt, actually I have a 450 watt. But I just want to show you that if you hook this up on here, even a 350 watt, right? Turn it on. You hear it come on, barely. Little green lights on, right? Well, it didn't work. Sometimes it doesn't work with the, uh, no, it actually reset. A lot of times it will not work with the drill. I've noticed that. I'd have to use the 450 watt Coleman. I've noticed that. And that's one reason I was going to say not to get the 350. Sometimes it works with the drill. Sometimes it doesn't. Now, in this case, this is a 1200 watt. Now, the difference, the disadvantages between these two, um, is that this takes a slight amount of draw just to run it so it takes a little bit more draw to run this one than it takes this one I notice sometimes I can't get the drill going on this unless I have the contacts really good on the battery on a 450 watt one it works so if you get one of these and you figure you want to least power drill it better be 450 or 500 or 600 watts not 350 so but sometimes the drill will work but you see this that works off the 1200 watt now this pra practically runs a refrigerator it'll run a small refrigerator it'll run a normal size or bigger refrigerator if this has some power coming into it from like a car so if you start up your car and you have this hooked up to the battery and you're running a car you can actually um, use it to keep your refrigerator going for a few hours or whatever the hell it is so this is a cheap way to actually have some power it's actually a hell of a lot easier because you got this battery here you just hook it up it's quiet there's no fuel there's no noise and what I do with this thing is I keep this in like a heavy plastic that has like a little bit of air gap in it that's you know away from the weather so there's no dust no bugs get in there but it's not totally sealed so it doesn't acquire moisture this thing is actually 
probably six years old and it actually works absolutely fine. Now there's one other thing I want to go over. This is a small solar panel. Now I know it's a joke, right? It's a small one and it has a charge controller on it. You can use this to keep your battery up, charged up and all this type of stuff. Now I'm not too much on the solar panels because I got two, um, what do you call it? Two generators, one diesel, one gas. I mean, I got four vehicles plus a motorcycle, and I got several other batteries out here, so <laughs> I can get all the power I need to, you know, one way or the other. And there's plenty of fuel. So, but I want to go over. This is actually a very cheap way to do it. If you have a battery, you need a brand new battery. You can use a Walmart battery, but I probably go for like a Duralast or something like that. Deep Cycle, I think they're better quality, but. Um, you can get any brand you want as long as it's a good quality, but using this battery minder, the battery will stay 100% up to snuff all the time. It will last, you know, the sticker will say it's expired, but the damn battery will still be good 20 years from now as long as you keep it um, on a desulfating type of battery charger. So, uh, and I would recommend with this, you're not going to be able to power a refrigerator with, with uh, 600 watts, but I would go for at least a five or 600 watt because you couldn't even use a power tool on this thing. I would recommend actually getting two. One like a three, I have a 350, a 450, and a 1200, and uh, some batteries. So this is another way you can get stuff a lot cheaper than running the generator. You can also get the small, small solar panel, but when you do, you have to get a charge controller with it so you don't overcharge your, your battery but I don't particularly like charging batteries with these things I'd rather just use the uh, you know I'm, I've never got into the solar and uh, I've noticed my Z diesel generator it's got like eight hours on it actually on the meter and it hasn't used any fuel in the tank I don't know why but you know, considering I got 500 gallons of fuel, I don't think I'm going to have a problem with electricity for quite some time as long as that thing runs. But this is a very economical way of doing electricity. Just a deep cycle battery, a battery minder type of charge charger, which is a battery conditioner, and two inverters. I'd recommend a 500 watt or a 450 watt and a 1200 watt or a 1500 watt. With larger wattage, you can run a refrigerator. So that should be uh, that's another thing to do.